Hey, I know what you need to do right now today, and that is invest in gold and silver. I have a great friend, his name's Terry Saka, and he owns CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. You can go there, there's a phone number, you can call, they will walk you through, Christian Patriots will walk you through your budget, what you have for investments, and they will help you diversify. It is so important, our dollar has become diluted, inflation is on the rise, and we have to diversify. We can't keep everything in the bank. We can't keep everything in the stock market. And we surely can't keep everything in cash. We have to take our money and invest in gold and silver. That's what's going to stand the test of time. That is what is going to be there when nothing else is. So I encourage you to go to Cornerstone Asset Metals today and buy you some gold and silver. Everything in this world is an attack on Christianity. In my opinion, every single thing that's out there, there is a, an agenda behind it all. They're going to attack what we believe on the age of the earth. They're going to attack what the Bible says on the shape of the earth. They're going to attack what the Bible says on how we uh, evolved, you know, from slime supposedly, as opposed to kinds producing after their own kinds, they're going to attack what is a man and what is a woman. It's all a concerted effort to loot, like when the devil wants to win souls for himself, right? And it's our job to, when we find something like this, when we see something this blatant, to speak about that. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Jesus, Guns, and Babies. I'm your host, Dr. Candace Taylor, and we have two awesome guests today. Two. It's going to be a good show. Y'all cannot wait for it. So we're going to start with Isaiah 66, 1. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. So don't you think about that. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. His footstool. And when my husband first heard about what we're going to talk about today, this was the verse that he just got revelation on from the Lord. And it's real easy to think about the Lord in heaven and us being his footstool and he's protecting us. It's just a good feeling. So I have today back on the show for the second time. And I usually don't have repeat guests. And so it's awesome. It's an honor. Dave Wise, Flat Earth Dave. And his friend, Matt Long. So welcome to Jesus, Kids, and Babies. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having. I can't think of a more fitting place for me to show up than Jesus, Guns, and Babies, but <laughs> perfect. So Matt, why? Tell me. Tell, tell everybody who you are. Sure. So I'm Dave's friend, obviously, as you introduced me so eloquently. <laughs> I used to host the Flat Earth podcast with Dave. We still do. We and still I, do. Technically, we still do because the last one that was put on close to, I don't know, a century ago is is him and I. So Yes, I'm still the co-host for now of the Flat Earth Podcast. I have a normal job. I, I live a somewhat normal life, except for I have seven children with a beautiful Canadian. And yeah, so most of our life is raising babies and growing up the next generation. So that's that's what encompasses most of my world. I stumbled aclo- across this subject in 2015, and it took me on a wild ride. It, it took me to meet Dave in Raleigh, North Carolina. It was the first place that I met him. And then he and I ended up speaking in many places um, across the plain and started hosting a show together. And my side of it is really the biblical side. So I can't wait to expand on the verse that you brought up today, Dave. And, uh, you know, when I met Matt, he, uh, Matt was definitely on the biblical side. He's like, he's the goalkeeper on the biblical side. And for myself, I was on the other side of the fence, right? When I discovered Flat Earth, I was, um, you might even say I was anti-biblical. I was almost, I I guess I never labeled myself. I would consider myself a non-believer in a creator. But then after I discovered the Flat Earth, I found out there is a creator. There's no, there's no choice. There's no way out of it. And uh, since then, um, it it was it's an amazing amazing journey. So when we did the podcast together, and we still do it. We just um last episode was almost three years ago, but um, <laughs> we're, we're going to do another one soon. 
We're just about yeah, to do we, one. We we had one scheduled, but then Matt had to change some diapers and things got messed up. In it's fact, when they started this show before we re- hit record with their normal intro, it was very cute. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, well, just finishing my story real quick. Um, it was a great balance because I always say, um, because I came from a non-biblical point of view, like I'd watch a show, an amazing show. I'm listening to research and all this stuff. And then as soon as they mentioned something, Bible, Quran, whatever, I'd write them off. I'm like, oh, religious fanatics, right? That was my thinking years ago. But then, you know, I discovered that uh, this is, I mean, my thinking was absolutely insane. I said, I don't want to lead with Bible stuff because if someone like me hears it, they're not going to hear it. Like if you go to a Christian and say, look in the Bible, page one, you know, God separated the waters from the water. Psalms 19 ones, you know, the heavens declare the glory of, of God and the firmament show it, show it his handiwork. Um, they're going to hear that. But I like to start with the science and then go, oh, yeah. And it's also in the Bible. And Matt backs up, you know, all, all the Bible stuff. So I thought it was a great balance and it worked out well. It's an excellent balance, David. And I, I, what I like from you is how your background, if you just talk for a second, just in case people didn't hear the first episode when you came on, your background was totally opposite and was actually, you explored what the world pushes as the real thing. And you were an expert in that. That's what I like about you. I, I took four years of astronomy in college and I was great at it. And I was, I, I mean, it was amazing. I spent, you know, uh, I could countless nights, you know, several times a week in an observatory. We had a huge observatory on the top of our science building looking into the heavens. But when I'm looking at these things, I'm determining what they are by what they told me they are. I see this light in the distance and I'm like, oh, that's a star. It's 46 times bigger than our sun and 333 light years away. And um, I have no way to disprove that. I'm told that I look at it and I believe it. Right. So you see what you believe, you know, what, what you're told to believe. I always say, you know, if you get a flat earther and a globe earther and got them in some sort of rocket ship and, you know, got high off the earth, the globe earther would see a globe fading into distance and the flat earther would see a flat earth fading into the distance. And as we approached another world, perhaps the globe earther would see them up globe approaching and we would just see another lit pond with lit land. Yeah, because perception is reality. And it's like that with everything, social issues, this issue, any issue, whatever we perceive as our reality, but that doesn't mean it's actually reality. A hundred percent. Like, for example, right here, you know, I could tell you this is a star or not a star, the sun or the moon, and it's spherical. But if we zoom forward, we see that it's actually a train and it's not a sphere. Everything looks like a sphere in the distance. Everything. Check it out. So. So when people say, why are all the other spheres up there and we're flat? It's not like that at all. That's interesting. So Dave, yeah. you're saying from a high perspective, we do like, look like a sphere because everything does. When you look at um, anything in the distance, you know, perspective brings the sides in, the tops and the bottoms, and it all goes down to the vanishing point. Okay. And, and so everything turns into a sphere. Every light in the distance turns into a sphere. It, what appears to be a sphere, right? And then we're just told to believe these things. But when you look at the science, you know, and, and, and I'm going to jump back to the Bible for a second, you know, the size and distances they tell us these stars are, are scientifically impossible. You can never see them at these distances. The sizes, you know, the brightness and the angular size don't work. And if you do the math, which is a little boring, um, you realize that it's provable that they're unseeable. Um, but when I was younger and I was like looking into the Bible, It said there's um, it talks about the stars falling to earth, right? What what is the what is that, Matt? What is that from? Where the the stars, the angels, they fall to the earth. I think it's Matthew 24, 29. Right. And that's and that's and I discounted I discounted the Bible. I'm like, that's ridiculous. A star falling to the earth, a star would eat the earth. The star is a million billion times bigger than the earth. And so because of that indoctrination, I dismiss the Bible. And what I've come to realize, you know, when people go, Why would they lie about the shape of the earth? I say the shape doesn't matter, but they're lying about the earth because they're hiding the creator. That is the number one reason. The people that are running this world, and I call them people liberally, um, they're hiding God. They're hiding creation. And when they hide creation and you accept it, 
you give away your God given power, you give away your God given common sense and you trade it in for pure and total nonsense. Yeah, I totally agree with what Dave's saying there. In in my 20s, the reason I didn't believe the Bible is because of the astronomy class I was taking in college, the physics class, the geology class, these things that told me that what it said on page one of the Bible wasn't possible. These these teachers and these textbooks were telling me that they figured out a way that this place was created without an all-loving, all-powerful creator, and they told me those things were proven. So for me to try to reconcile that with with page one of the Bible, which was totally opposite what my college courses were telling me, I couldn't do it. I didn't even want to read page two because it sounded ridiculous. So I I have a similar approach than, than Dave does, but my passion is really, Dave has really taken off on the the provability, like what can I hold in my hand that proves that the earth is flat and not a spinning ball flying through space. And I've taken the road of, man, I just want to dig into the Bible and see what other revelations are there because the Bible has not changed for almost 2000 years. Textbooks change every year. You've got first edition, second edition, third edition, and people say the Bible is not a science book, which is true because science books were created by men attempting to describe the things of God while at the same time removing God from the equation but the Bible doesn't function on that type of illogic. The Bible is ultimate truth and ultimate truth cannot change. So why does it matter? Like Dave touched on, because in Romans 1.20, it says that you can get to know the creator through the things that were made. And so if that's the case, if someone can actually come to know the creator, Jesus, who is the creator, according to Hebrews 1, Colossians 1, and John 1, if you can get to know him through the creation, then man is without excuse. And if that's the case, well, then the devil, of course, is going to dilute what that creation is. And how do you dilute something? You pour it into something bigger, like infinite space, and you tell people they're just infinite probabilities and ever expanding, potentially infinite universe. And that's what I was dealing with in my 20s. By the grace of God, I actually started reading the Bible for myself. I was actually, I figured out I was entrusting my eternal salvation to the opinions of others because I didn't actually read the Bible. I was just listening to these people talking heads on TV. I've decided that the only thing close to being that dumb is allowing the government to take make important health decisions for you. I mean, but by far, the one that takes the cake is allowing someone else to determine your eternal salvation without researching the evidence for yourself. I researched the evidence for the Bible. It was the manuscript evidence for the Bible that convinced me that the Bible was true. And not only true, but the Bible that we have today is the Bible that was written 2,000 years ago. And then I stumbled on to this idea of flat earth. And you have a lot of Christians that say, well, it's not a salvational issue. And I agree for a Christian, this is not a salvational issue. I, I think it's important to trust the word of God and take certain things literally when you're supposed to. But for a guy like Dave, for a guy like me in my twenties, it would have been a salvational issue because it was the spinning ball heliocentric model, big bang theory that says nothing exploded and created everything. That's what kept me from even reading the Bible because the Bible seemed like a fairy tale compared to those things. But now that I've come across what I call literal biblical cosmology, something that I believe is provable that the earth is not spinning and there is no curve and the Bible backs that up. It's something that's only brought me closer to God, closer to Jesus. And like Dave says, closer to the creator for himself. Right. And um, when you when when you're a little kid, you know, the first thing they teach you is, uh, you know, you go to school globe in front of the class, you know, Sesame Street, astronauts on Sesame Street. And there and then you get to watch Star Wars and Star Trek and all of these, you know, it's all about um, this this religion of outer space. OK, and and they they want you believing in that because then, you know, that hides the creator from you. Now, there are people love Star Wars, love the globe and, you know, are, are, are connected, you know, cr- strong Christians or whatever. But they're missing out a lot. They're missing out on their true position. Right. If you don't know where your feet are planted, how are you really going to expand your mind, your thoughts out into this God given beautiful realm that we have? And uh, once you start doing that. Uh, every everything changes. Everything. You know, I think that any way the enemy can deceive us, he does. And so that's why I was interested in learning about it. At first, I was campaigning. I was I was doing political stuff, and this came up in one of my events. People were talking about this, and so then I started like, oh my gosh, I do not have time to deal with this. If it is, it is. If it's not, it's not. I don't care. Like this is not. We're losing our country. We're not going to be free. We're not going to have money. We're not going to have an economy. You know, they're pushing transgenderism on our kids. Like I, I can't handle this right now. But then 
you know, my husband and my daughter, my 15 year old, they really dug in and it's like they got revelation of it through reading the Bible and studying like they did just scientifically. And I could not even talk to them because they were like, how do you not see this? I mean, they would get angry. It's like for people that get it, they have it so strong. My, my campaign manager, Bryant, he has it. And it's like once it clicks, you cannot unsee it. And so for me, every time I talk to Dave or every time I talk to one of them, more and more, I'm like, it doesn't make sense. So is it or not? I don't know 100%, but it's just, it doesn't make sense the other way. It, now that you see it. it. Is the, the people that defend the globe don't know anything about the globe, because if they knew a tenth of what Matt and I know about the globe, they would be flat earthers because it's absolutely ridiculous. People are like, of course, it's a globe. We've known seasons, sunsets, uh, ships over the horizon. But they but they've never actually looked at that themselves and ask yourself, you know, hey, can you see me right now without this computer? Like if you went outside and looked towards my house, could you see my house from uh, Georgia? I'm in Connecticut. The answer is no. Therefore, the earth must be curved. Or maybe there's another reason. Maybe it's dark. Maybe there's a mountain in the way. Maybe it's just too far to see. Maybe there, it's foggy. You know, there's a million things that all compile together. But globe believers just it's like, oh, you can't see it. It's over the curve. And they, they have this dogmatic belief and they're unwilling to look because of that training from birth, you know, through all of the indoctrination system school. Um, there, it's all globe programming, and it's. I believe the bottom line is to hide you from connecting to the Creator and finding out your true power. I mean, nobody has control over my mind. Nobody's going to govern my mint. That's exactly right, Dave. What you brought up earlier, Candace, all those things matter that that you brought up. But what also matters is not being deceived. And for me, flat Earth was my first big awakening to oh, maybe the government isn't telling me everything that I need to know, or maybe they don't have my best interests at heart. Um, maybe I shouldn't be vaccinating my children, you know, things like that, that now there are hills that I would die on that I never would have woken up to had I not stumbled across uh, the, the biggest lie in the history of lies. Well, yeah, and whenever I, I can't unsee this, all the globes everywhere, I turn on TV, there's globes in the background, there's globes on there right here, like this would be a globe if I was a normal person, like everywhere there's globes, you see them all the time, I mean, it's constant, my children will be like, mama, globe, 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 they're everywhere, and that's what they do to brainwash, and so for me, if it is not a conspiracy, if it is, you know, real, why are you pushing so hard Everywhere I go, every store, you buy a globe. There's globes everywhere. Every movie, every TV show, news media. Why? Well, I think if if someone is a Christian in this day and age and they've woken up a little bit since 2019, they should understand that everything in this world is an attack on Christianity, in my opinion. Every single thing that's out there, there is a an agenda behind it all. They're going to attack what we believe on the age of the earth. They're going to attack what the Bible says on the shape of the earth. They're going to attack what the Bible says on how we uh, evolved, you know, from slime, supposedly, as opposed to kinds producing after their own kinds. They're going to attack what is a man and what is a woman. It's all a concerted effort to lose, like when the devil wants to win souls for himself, right? And it's our job to, when we find something like this, when we see something this blatant, to speak about that. And no matter by, what the cost is. By by hiding the true, you know, our true placement in this world, um, they're literally are trying to steal our soul. I believe a lot of... Um, depression, which leads into sometimes drug addiction, that all comes from your soul not being able to communicate with your mind that's been taken over by the television programming, you know, and and so you 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 literally become depressed because you're lost. I've seen the Flat Earth Awakening take people out of depression, take people out of drug addiction and because they have a whole new meaning. I always say once you understand, once you find, see the globe lie, you're never bored again, ever, not even. Not that, Matt, you ever have an opportunity to be bored, but never is there a, a, a second that you can be bored because, bored because there's so much 
Um, so much to look at. It, it, it's unreal. This map right here is the Gleason's map. It is um, the best map that we have. It's a map that's used for navigation. It was in all the encyclopedias in the 1950s and before. It was in all the schools and all the libraries. And then it was removed in like 1958 or 1959. It just removed. Most people haven't seen this. Okay. Let me show you a, a quick thing. Um, last summer, I believe in July, they, uh, there was a big news story going around saying that 99% of the world's population was in sunlight was, was ha during the day. Now, think about it. A globe, a ball with a single source light, that light can only light up half of that ball. No matter how you tilt it or spin it, only half of it's going to have that light on it. But there was you know, at least a twilight all around here. And the only place that didn't have light was... Um, was Antarctica was, was not Antarctica was um, Australia. Australia and New Zealand and the tip of Santiago. All of this was in light when this should have been in dark. This was a, I have a little video where the other side of the ball was lit. We drew a line. All of this somehow was in light when it should have been in dark. Right. And let me just show you how that could look on a flat earth. Right. So here we have the Gleason's map and we're, we're putting California right on the edge of darkness, just like they did. And it'll show you all this, all of this land is 99% of the earth. The only thing missing is it's kind of hard to see is um, Australia and New Zealand and the tip of Santiago of, of, of South America. So works perfectly on a flat earth does not work on a globe earth. I don't know. I kind of call that strong evidence. I know. And, and they don't want, well, it makes sense. And so yeah. everything they do, everything they say does not make sense. I want to tell y'all one thing that I have been paying attention to is Elon Musk because of, of SpaceX and all that. And he posts and he'll post a globe or he'll post something. And I honestly, y'all, I think he's like trolling us. Like he posts stuff and I'm like, he knows, he knows because he's got this company, he's got these rockets, they're not working. He's getting paid all this money from the government. And I'm going... Is he is he serious or is he playing? So I read all his tweets like that, and it it blows my mind. Yeah, I think he potentially could be someone who's found out what the actual truth is. He's supposedly a smart guy, and yeah. that he's literally just blackmailing the the federal government. I know. I try. I feel like he's trolling us. Like, <laughs> or just another point of view. You know, all of his rockets are provably fake. There's nobody ever on them. They're not going into outer space. We can we can prove it. I think I showed you his uh, grain silo launch that's supposedly going to go to Mars. And it's clearly not a real rocket launch. So if you're faking rocket launches, are you really a whistleblower or are you just part of the complete and total psyop to make people lost in space? My personal opinion of Elon Musk is, He's a complete and total fraud. If you go to flatearthdave.com, there's a Elon Musk banner there. Five minute video. Take your time. Wow. Yeah. And I, I just that that's the one because he's made so much money. Golly, all that, all that stuff he's done. And I feel like that the electric car company is not making a lot of money. I know some people who have Teslas, but they're so expensive to make and he's gotten all of this money. And I think it's all came because he knows the truth and they're trying, he's trolling us. That's what I feel like, but who knows? You know, isn't it every Tesla that's go that's sold, they loses like $10,000, but he gets $20,000 in government grants. Yeah. So, so the, it's a losing battle, but the government is funding it for whatever the reason is. And, and why would they fund that kind of thing? I, right. mean, I know they want to push their agenda for electric cars too, but you've also got this whole thing going with SpaceX. Not was it SpaceX? What's he have? SpaceX. Anyway. SpaceX. Yeah. yeah. So y'all go into some of the things about flat Earth, just in case people don't know, and just some of the the things that woke you up and made you realize because we do this, we love this. This is the part that we love when you start getting it. You say, "Oh well." How does water on the ocean spin and not go everywhere? It doesn't make sense. But then my water here just oh, empty. <clears throat> it just doesn't make sense. And so we all do some of that back and forth. Sure. Dave, do you want me to start with the Bible and then push some of the some of the other stuff over to you? Sure. You could start with something. And I so I want to talk about Antarctica. Okay. All right. So 
Something that I would like Dave to touch on in a little bit is the fact that the two characteristics of a spinning ball are curvature and motion. And curvature and motion are the two things that we cannot detect here on Earth. So if there's no curvature, there's no motion, there is no spinning ball. But for me, it was the Bible, getting into the Bible, that really opened my eyes for this thing. So when a Christian tries to tell you that the earth is a ball, they'll reference Isaiah 40, 22. And Isaiah 40, 22 is Isaiah talking about the circle of the earth. And so they'll say, see, the Bible says the earth is a circle. It's a sphere. And you say, no, Isaiah used the word circle on purpose because a circle can be flat, just like a pizza. If he would have used the Hebrew word for ball, which he did in, in Isaiah 22, 18, when he was talking about something being tossed like a ball, then he would have been referring to the earth as a ball. They would also say Job 26, 7, where it talks about the earth uh, hanging on nothing. Well, in fact, that is true. The earth doesn't hang on anything. It's set on pillars under a dome, just like it says later in Job, I believe, 38. You have the earth that was created three days before the sun in Genesis. You have in Joshua the account of God stopping the sun and moon over specific places, meaning that they're smaller and local. And the fact that he stopped the moon also is significant because Christians would like to say, oh, the earth stopped spinning, which would have killed everyone. But let's just say God could stop the earth from spinning. It wouldn't stop the moon because the earth and the sun are, are is that relationship. So if the earth stops spinning, Dave, you want to say something? No, I was going to say that that was one of the things that got me um, when I was a kid. They talked about in the Bible how um, God said the earth would stop spinning. And then you have people like Neil deGrasse Tyson and the rest of the clowns out there that are pushing scientism. They would say, oh, if the earth stops spinning or even if it slowed down, all the waters would leave the oceans. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. I'm like, oh, the Bible, you know, what earth stops spinning. Everybody would be dead if the earth stopped spinning. But in a That's flat earth, everything the Bible talks about makes sense. That's correct. Dave and I do not believe in a solar system where the earth is flat and the other planets are round and you can sail off the edge of the earth. We do not believe in that. No flat earther believes in that. We don't believe in a solar system. We believe in an earth system, whatever that may be. I believe it's a domed experience, kind of like a snow globe, not like what Dave's showing now. I believe it's a domed experience where the sun, moon, and stars are located inside the firmament, which is described in Genesis 1. The firmament is not an empty expanse. It is a solid sea of glass that is called in Revelation. It's called God's molten looking glass. That is not an empty expanse. That is something hard. It's what's separating us from heaven. It's And like you brought up at the beginning, God's footstool, okay? The Bible says that God resides in the sides of the north. So Dave, if you can bring up that flat earth map, the north pole is in the center of the flat earth. And if God resides in the sides of the north, that means he sits directly above the center of the earth. And in Revelation 4, 3, John has a vision of heaven. He actually goes to the throne of God and he sees an emerald rainbow around the throne, right? Well, what color is an emerald? It's green. The northern lights are green. So the northern lights are literally emanating from the throne of God. I used to live at the 55th parallel up in Canada and I could see the Northern Lights and it's quite the experience seeing them knowing that it is the emerald rainbow emulating from the throne of God as opposed to whatever they tell us they are um, in mainstream science. So I believe that this place is created. There may, there's over 200 verses in the Bible that describe the nature of this place. And the only thing that satisfies all 200 of those is a domed experience with the North Pole at the center, with a firmament on top, with the sun, moon, and stars is moving, and us being flat, motionless, and established, like Psalm says. Dave. There's, there's so many so many verses in the Bible that talked about a non-moving, stationary, fixed Earth, you know, and everything with the stars and the moon falling there, stop moving. That don't even make sense on a flat earth. And then the, the debunkers will be like, well, what, I, I, Isaiah? Was it Isaiah that says the circle of the earth? Well, if you look up what the definition of a circle is, a circle, this is the definition, is a line on a plane, which is a flat surface, where every point on that line is equidistant from the center. That's a circle, okay, on a plane. Well, if we live in what I call, we live in this, in this pond. We live in a world pond. And the shoreline of our pond is the land that's higher than the water. That's Antarctica, the highest land on earth. They don't teach you that in school, right? They don't teach you that in school. So if we look at Antarctica, this is, these mountain ranges are called Dome A, Dome B, Dome C, Dome A. Like they're all named domes, but they're all, are they on the interior 
this is all inverted. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay. So this is how they hide the world, right? So here's a map of the world, just a map that we know. And we'll circle the United States, a little bit of Canada, a little bit of South America, Mexico, right? And then we get rid of all of the rest of the map and we wrap it around a sphere, okay? Now you teach a kid, this is all that there is. There's nothing else. It's just North America, South America, okay? Now, I think that we live in a world of many pieces of the plane, planets, so let's say we live in this pond, okay? This is our entire world pond, just the center of this pond. This white ring here is Antarctica, right? Here's our small sun circling around. You got South America, Africa, Australia, right? And then here are the extra lands, extra terra, extra territory, extra terrestrials, perhaps from the outer space, right? But this is just one pond, right? What if they cut out this pond, the controllers of our world, they wrapped it around a sphere and they said, this is all that there is. And you're not allowed to explore South. South is Antarctica. This is South. Now, all of those domes we saw were here, but in reality, they are out. I think they're where, if there's a firmament that attaches to the earth, I think that's where those domes are. Those dome mountains. Okay. They've inverted it. So the center is really the outside of our pond. It was all brought together. OK, so look, the center is really out out here. And those don't those those mountains are all out here. So then they bring them together. And I tell people this is this is what I this is how they trap you in the heliocentric matrix. It's a prison for your mind. It's to limit your thoughts. It's to stop you from understanding that you are part of God's creation. And um, it, it's to, you know, take away your your natural right your power your ability to think beyond beyond you know the the heliocentric prison it's just it's literally a prison for your mind um as matt said they want your soul this sounds silly people laugh at this but there's power in words how do you steal someone's soul you brainwash them and you fish it away in the soul lure system hmm. You know, Dave, I was just going to elaborate on Antarctica, the fact that we believe there's only a North Pole, that there is no South Pole. And when you use a compass, the compass always points north. When you get across the equator, the south side of your compass should start to point towards the South Pole, but it does not. It only it has what's called a magnetic declination. So the further away from the North Pole you get, the worse your compass is, the less accurate it is. And in fact, when you go to the South Pole, explorers there, even as recent as Con Colin O'Brady, has said that you might as well not even bring a compass to Antarctica because it doesn't work. And that to me is proof that there is no South Pole because as you get closer to the supposed South Pole, your compass should start acting like the South Pole is the North Pole, the Southern right. The southern tip of your compass should be point south, but it does not. And it's because you're getting farther right. and farther away from the magnetic center. On the equator, your compass shouldn't work because it would be trying to go in both directions. The equator right? should be the hardest place to use a compass on the planet. Right. And it works perfectly, perfectly fine. So here's a little experiment. So here's here is um here's our, our flat earth map. And I have a uh, neodymium magnet. We'll call that Mount Maru. And I have my compass plane boat, whatever it is. And that needle is pointing towards the center as I try to push it west. West is a circle equidistant from the center. Okay. Doesn't prove flat earth because it's the same on a globe. East is a circle. You got to keep that compass pointing 90 degrees to the center. And east is 90 degrees off of that. Um, you go around. It's only when you try to dead reckon, right? So here we are. That's west right there. And if I follow that line, boom, immediately the compass north is behind me and I'm heading south. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite spin fully. So south is every direction away from the center. Did we lose Candace? Uh, probably a little bit. We'll keep going, though. We'll, we'll just take over the show here. You know, one of the things that, that really gets me is the fact that the Earth is not spinning, okay? 
And there's something called the Mickelson and Morley experiment that was done in the 1800s. I believe it's been done as recently as like 1989. And what they were trying to do was bounce light rays off mirrors in order to prove that there was like an ether current and that the earth was in motion. And something that was extremely embarrassing, perhaps the most embarrassing experiment in the history of science, was that they could not prove the motion of earth. And before that, Albert Einstein had written his theory of relativity, and because of that experiment, he had to write his special theory of relativity to make an exception for light, the fact that it doesn't follow the characteristics of the spinning universe, spinning solar system, and what that is, that is direct proof that they were trying to manipulate their theories based on their findings. They were going, they were doing it backwards. They, they constantly do that. They'll say, okay, this would kind of be what a flat earth looks like. And this would kind of be what a globe earth looks like. And then the results come out completely looking like a flat earth. And they go, wait a minute, we're going to change our goal. We're going to move the globe post and we're going to add 96% dark matter and dark energy to our gravitational theory um, because it, it, it has to. And they constantly just keep changing and changing and changing and making up stories um, to, to fit. Um, their model. And it's really horrible. It's, it's, it's once you see it, you, uh, the first thing you do is you kind of kick yourself on the rear side going, how did I ever believe this? Like, how was I so naive? So, so lost in the system. And um, there, there's so much of this. Here's the, here's the thing. If you're new to flat earth, if you're listening to this, right, I don't expect you to go hang, watch this podcast and go, all right, the earth is flat. Although some people do. Um, you have to take the time and do the research. Okay. You have to get good information. Now, if you Google flat earth, if you Google D I T R H, which is my YouTube channel, you're not going to get any of my stuff. You're going to get all of the same propaganda they want you to find, right? If you Google, Google Matt long, flat earth, Dave Weiss, flat earth, D I T R H flat earth, sunsets, flat earth proof. You're going to get all propaganda. That's a, that's a red flag right there. The fact that your Google searches, your YouTube searches, don't give you what you're asking for that that actually is waking up a lot of people like wait a minute i'm getting the same results something's going on here because they don't trust the government already so there you yeah, go you, the reason they won't find my channel is because youtube deleted it so <laughs> oh that's another another good reason I, I love the video that dave has up behind him here because it's proving two things one what it's showing is that not only are the planets revolving around the sun, supposedly, but the sun is also traveling through the galaxy. The galaxy is also moving and the universe is also expanding. Yet we see perfect star trails and we have stars and the zodiac that has been in the same position for thousands of years without changing. Another thing is what I love people bring up is, hey, I'm a long range shooter. I have to adjust for the spin of the earth when I shoot my weapon which is a joke because the earth actually spins at different speeds, depending on what latitude you're at and what direction you're shooting. But here's the thing, the earth, yes, it's spinning at 1,040 miles an hour at the equator, according to the, to the globe theory. But the earth is also going around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour. The sun is going through the galaxy at 450,000 miles an hour. And the universe is expanding at over a million miles an hour. But for some reason, this long range shooter thinks he needs to adjust for the thousand mile an hour spin of the earth and not the million mile expansion of the universe or the 450,000 mile an hour traveling speed of the sun. It's all nonsense. The longest um, shot was just taken recently. And a Jaren from the Jaronism channel actually called i got in touch with the shooter and he said how what did you do about coriolis and he goes oh we didn't calculate for that longest shot ever didn't calculate for coriolis i think the bullet was in the air for like 27 seconds or something something ridiculous I mean, don't don't quote me on that exact amount of time wow if it was the, the earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour do the math i mean what do they line up the target and then they're okay then i'm gonna shoot left and let it hook right yeah it's, well, it's really the dumbest dumbest stuff ever stuff ever but um we're on a, the, the stars are spinning around us and we get these perfect trails. But if we were doing this, this is what the stars would look like. Yeah. Yeah. It would look nothing like this beautiful, organized, perfect, you know, spinning, you know, and the biggest argument people have is, well, in the South, they spin in the different direction. The optics of the sky are no way to prove the shape of the earth. The stars that they tell us that what they are cannot possibly be. So we don't even know exactly what it is that we're looking at, but we have optics that do explain why they appear to rotate in different directions, why there appears 
to be a center point. Um, but no matter what we say, we can't go up there. We can't measure it. We don't know the sizes, the distances. We don't know anything. So stop looking at the space. Stop looking up into the sky you know, at your ceiling to describe the shape of your floor. I have round lights in my ceiling. Therefore, I'm on a round floor. Right. I mean, it's you're, like, you're it's, sorry. It's go like ahead, chaos. Candace. It's like chaos. That's what that's what it looks like to me. And God is never chaotic. And when you think about how simple the Bible is, you read the scripture. It's simple. I just don't believe, you know, as a child, I thought, well, it's just God and he's so marvelous and, and we don't understand everything and everything's just, you know, it's okay that we don't understand outer space and it, we just accept it because God is God. And so he just made it chaotic. I just, now when I look at everything, it looks so simple. It makes sense for God to have things simple and in order. And the word is eternal because it's spiritual law and he will never lie. He will never dishonor what he set into motion. And I just believe that it's simple. And so when everything's chaotic and, and all these things like in, in astrology and in, in the study of space and, and astronauts, everything is chaotic. And You know what, Candace? And not I, I believe that. I also believe that he would not use imagery that was not that was in the direct opposite of what he had actually created. I do not believe he would create an ever expanding universe, but then use imagery of a flat earth because people say, oh, these were authors writing what they believed. Well, no, in Job, it's actually God talking about the things that he created in Job 38. So those are God's words, not Job talking about his creation, talking about the pillars of the earth, talking about um, the the nature of this creation. So I I am fully on the same page as with you there. And and with all these motions, you know, we're spinning, twirling, whirling, and corkscrewing through space. But the real motions of the stars are beautiful, like spirographs. If you remember that toy as a kid, um, and it's the the motions of the stars and the planets are are more accurate than the finest wristwatch. Okay, how is that possible? And when we look up at the stars with today's optics, you know, we don't see burning balls of hydrogen. We see these energetic, pulsing, in my opinion, sentient um, energies up there. Right. And, uh, you know, supposedly we live in this heliocentric, you know, this gravitationally ruled um, world where, you know, you have a giant burning ball of gas holding on to all the planets, but it ignores all the moons and all of the planets hold on to their own moons and they ignore each other. And even when they all line up and all that gravity is in a row, it all keeps to itself. Gravity is very polite. It keeps uh, it keeps to itself. It doesn't um, it doesn't bother any you know it doesn't influence any other uh, other planets there's a thing called the three body problem and the three body problem is in a computer model you can take all right i got a sun it's this big it's got this much gravity i got a planet and boom put it into orbit and it could predict what it's going to do forever okay but then then um you take it um you, you can add one more body so you add a uh, uh, another planet or a moon going around the planet and no computer can figure out what it's going to do. These are all the same size. If they were different sizes, it'd be even worse. But what happens is they start pulling on each other and the orbits change a little bit. And then it goes into complete chaos mode and no computer can, no computer, supercomputer, quantum computer can figure out what this thing's going to do next. Okay. That's wow. three bodies, right? They tell us now that, that uh, Jupiter or is it Jupiter or one of our planets has like 70 moons that we have another moon. We have, yep. And everything works perfectly. Our sun is 400 times bigger than our, than our moon, but it's 400 times farther. So they look like they're the same size. Well, that kind of sounds like intelligent design to me if that was the case. And then the chances of them eclipsing perfect, like two quarters lined up with each other, the odds of that are so small, I can't even think of the number. But then for it to happen a second time, that's... That's impossible. That's like winning the Powerball every day for a year. The odds are better than that for that. But the problem is there's eclipses every year. And every 18 years, all of the eclipses, the entire pattern repeats again and again and again and again. It's a repeating pattern. Does that sound like random chaos, gravitationally, big bang, explosion and chaos? Right? There's no explanation for it other than it is an intelligently designed system dave did you talk about antarctica and and how we can't go there and and how and the government and the and all that could you talk about that for a second 
Yeah. So, you know, there's two places in the world that um, that we can't go. And that's uh, Antarctica and the North Pole. And why? Right? Why can't we go there, Dave? Make it make sense. Why? Well, they 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 say, well, here's the reason is, uh, you know, Admiral Byrd supposedly flew out there in the 1950s. He said there's land bigger than the United States beyond the South Pole um, filled with resources, natural resources, food, you know, coal, oil, um, uranium, everything. And uh, all the countries in the world, they all agree. Nobody can go there. Nobody can go. Right. So they signed the Antarctic Treaty. A dozen countries signed on. Now, almost every country in the world is signed on. Um, and they say nobody, nobody can go there. Right. Does that make any sense to you? Right. So they as kids, they show us um, you know, stories of National Geographic guys going to the North Pole. They're freezing. Their fingers are coming off. They have their dogs are running out of food. Right. But the cameramen are fine. Right. Filming this whole thing. And basically, it's just to make you go. No, no kid to ever go. I want to go to the North Pole. Right. It's to scare you away. Same thing in Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth. It's horrible. You can't go there. Right. So. You can't go there physically. They won't let you. Um, you know, you can you can get a very expensive vacation for three days to go to Antarctica. They take you to this island, which is gigantic. It's an island called Deception Island, right next to Rothschild Island. Is it and really I'll show you. Is yes, it, really it is. That? Yeah, Deception Island next to Rothschild Island. You're okay? kidding me, right? I, I am not kidding you. And um, and they uh, they uh, they'll show. Show you some penguins and some ice, but no one's allowed to go explore independently, right? And even wow. if they did, how far are you going to get? But they don't. I don't. I think that there's evidence of not being on a ball not that far from the shoreline. Maybe a couple hundred miles, maybe a thousand miles, maybe less. Okay, I don't know how far it is, but um. So you can't go there physically, but check this out. Go, anyone could do this. Get Google Earth on your computer. And take out the measuring tool and you can measure. Look, I measure. I drew a line around uh, South America. No problem. OK, now I'm going to draw a line around Antarctica and watch what happens when I connect it. It doesn't measure Antarctica. It made like this crescent shape all the way around it. Wow. It, it won't let me do that. So you can't even go there virtually. So now let's try the North Pole. All right. Let me go up. Um, North Pole. Dave, boy, you be hacking these people. It is so funny. <laughs> so here's one. I'm gonna I'm gonna measure the North Pole, and this is the North Pole area. And watch what happens. Same thing. It goes around. I can measure anywhere else, middle middle of the ocean, anywhere else except the North Pole and South Pole. Right? Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna measure um, Greenland. Okay. No problem. It just won't let you measure the North Pole and the South Pole. Wow. Zuck, right? Something else uh, about Antarctica is not only can you not go to Antarctica, but you can't get within 200 miles of Antarctica. It's everything past the 60th parallel, which is an insane amount of water as well. And um, right. I believe on those cruise ships, they only let 10% off the, of the people off the boat at a time in order to have a, a corralable crowd. So... And is in the Antarctica the place where they're visit, like where is it south of us? Is it north of us? Because Antarctica is all the way around, correct? Yeah, it's like if it's if you're thinking about a pizza, Antarctica is the crust, and we are we are in closer to the center. But the crust isn't the end of the world. I potentially, mean, yes. No, potentially. Potential, no, no, no. You're absolutely right. Here's the thing. Some people think that's it. Antarctica is the crust. The dome comes down, and that's God's creation. Some of us, others, it's like, hey, maybe, maybe we're not understanding that fully. And maybe there's other ponds out there. Maybe, maybe it goes out further. Again, we don't know. Matt, I think you're, uh, this is all there is. I Are think I'm more? a, yeah, I think I'm a pizza's all there is guy, but I'm totally open to the fascinating speculation that there could be more. So let me, let me show you um, something, Kansas, that you might not have seen. I've been talking about it a lot lately. So this is a map that was found uh, in a Buddhist temple, like 10 centuries old. It was published in Hawaii in 1910 in a magazine, in a newspaper. And it shows all of these other continents out here. OK, so is there an ice wall, an ice shoreline all the way around? Or are there times where maybe there's open water? Right. If you want to go to Antarctica, they take you from Santiago and maybe they take you just to the middle of this area right here. This is gigantic. This is bigger than North America, Mexico and Canada combined. It's like twice the size. 
right? So if they took you here and said, oh, you're at Antarctica, how would you know? You're not, you're not going to explore uh, even a small fraction of this, right? So what happened was some, uh, some other flat earthers were looking at ship tracking sites. And these are all cargo ships, and you can click on them. It gives you all the information, where they're going, ports, size, captain, everything. And they noticed there was a ship a couple hundred miles inside of Antarctica. They clicked on it, and all it said was the size of the ship was 580 meters long, 80 meters wide, which is gigantic. And it was registered in Kiribati. Have you ever heard of Kiribati? No. Where's Kiribati? Let's take a look. In the middle of the South Pacific, I have to put a pin on it because you can't even see it. Where, there it is. Okay. And we zoom in. It's a sandbar. I mean, it's more than a sandbar, but it's a tiny little island. Okay. And the U.S. and China and other countries say this is a most important trade route. A most important trade route. Okay. What are they getting here? Sand? You know, what, what are they getting fuel? Right. People only live here. This is like all unoccupied. OK, so what it, what why is that an important trade route? Why are they there's so many stories about it with military people there and nuclear bomb testing and all the stuff to keep people away from Kiribati. There was uh, somebody we, we found a, um, a Reddit thread where somebody said they were a government contractor and they were building an underground facility there for the for some government base. Right. What's going on here? Why do they have ships in impossible places? Somebody recently just found a ship like 800 miles inside of the Antarctic shoreline. Well, the Antarctica is a, you know, a continent. How do you get a ship 800 miles inland? OK, so also just one other note on Antarctica. There happens to be the Captain Cook Hotel. Captain Cook's the guy that tried to circle Antarctica, took him three and a half years, went over 68,000 miles. The Captain uh, Cook Hotel is on Kiribati. You said Antarctica. on Kiribati. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I said, I said Antarctica. It's on, it's on Kiribati. So now they got a hotel. Maybe it's just a fan of uh, Captain Cook and they got ships in impossible places. And the U S and China, China just gave them 10 or $11 billion. Okay. This little Island. Why are they giving them uh, money? Why, why, why are they doing that? And here's just my speculation is maybe there is a trade route and they're going out here to extra lands. Okay. Extra lands. And this is the trade route. Maybe they're trading computer chips. Maybe they're trading tuna fish. Maybe they're trading children. I don't know. Matt, quick biblical question. Does the Bible say there's only X number of continents or could this be the whole earth God's talking about? It really just talks about the ends of the earth. So where, the where that ends, ends I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe the ends are out here. Maybe the ends are farther. And when you said the ends of the earth, is does it end or is it sphere? You know, it doesn't make sense. It ends yeah, to earth. me, the ends of the earth would be where heaven meets earth, where the dome comes down. And yeah. I, I personally believe it comes down in Antarctica. That's the crust. Dave, I think that there could be more land beyond that. I'm open to the idea, like I said earlier. Uh, here's the thing. I'm open to the idea. Um, I'm open to it coming down somewhere. I personally, like if I had to take a guess, I'm, you know, hey, you're going to go for the end of Antarctica. I say Antarctica is all the way out here. I say all of this is Antarctica. Antarctica is everywhere where our sun Antarctic. So our sun is circling here. It's not arcing around like it does the Arctic. It's Antarctic because it's coming towards you and away from you if you're outside. So in so my any, mind, anything, all outs- of this is anything outside the sun's path, you're saying is Antarctica. Antarctica. So, yep. so look, so on, they, uh, which way did they go on the trip? Like which like which direction? In south. The southwest? South. South. South is every direction without turning. If you don't turn and you go in a straight line in any direction, you're heading south because eventually you're going to hit Antarctica. South is that way. South is that way. South is that way. South is every way. It's like, if I'm right here, this is America, and I go this way, I'm going south. If I'm here and I go this way, I'm going away from north. North is right here in the center. Now, if I go north, I'm going north, I'm going north, I'm going north, and now I'm going south. South, south, south. And the only way to go east and west is to continue in a curved path around the North Pole. And that's the same on the globe. Right. I'm just wondering, like, I know how I know how this is, because I but how is it for, uh, it's for I know I know the plane routes are all on a flat plane. 
But if yeah. I was going to take the trip to, to Antarctica from where I am, I'm going to go south. So it's going to be below me on the globe, flat earth. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, Dave, I'm, Dave, pull up a, a map, a non-flat earth map. Because I'm thinking it's all the way around. So could we be going anywhere around and reach Antarctica? Or where is their spot they let you go to? Well, here, I have a globe, right? So Antarctica is down here. So in America, you know, it's it's part of it's transparent. Don't worry about that. You'd have to go down that south, right? Down, right? And while you're trying to fly south, the earth is spinning, Okay. And it's flying and you're flying down or it's a flat plane. Airplanes fly straight and level over a flat earth, a flat plane, a flat plane. When you look at uh, airline routes, the, you know, the, the, the Southern flights are unreal. For example, check this one out. This is from Durban in South Africa to Dubai. Sydney. Well, okay. I Dubai. Yeah. So look. Dubai, no, no, they're not going to Dubai. It stops in Dubai, okay? They're going, the destination is from here to here on the globe. Why don't we just fly over here? Why did we go all the way up to Dubai and then all the way back down? Makes no sense. And again, trying to fly while the earth is spinning and flying through the universe and you're curving over, right? Versus, here we go, stops in Dubai and continues a straight line. Does that make sense or does that make sense? Yeah, it's similar to when I take a trip to Japan and I leave from Texas, I fly over Alaska and it looks very awkward on the ball, but it's just a straight line on. Right. So right here is Texas. Yep. And here, Alaska. Yep. And Japan. It's a straight line. A straight line. Something I'd like you to talk about, Dave, is the fact that there is no curvature. I know that the world record photo, or at least was, about 275 miles away, I believe it was in France. It's a picture of the sun setting over a um, a mountain range there, and there was something like 10 miles of missing curvature. Uh, you're talking about Canigo Mountain? No, not Canigal. I think Canigal is like 175 miles, something like that. It's 100. Well, Canigo is 100. And this is from Illusion, France. Canigo Mountain, 175 miles away. And the from this altitude, the top of Canigo should have been um, oh, well over a half a mile, closer to a mile below the curve. Right. So here we are. We're looking. Hey, we don't see it. Candace, just like you don't see my house, Earth must be curved. Right. So we don't see the light that's bouncing off of Mount Canigo from the sun. You don't see, you see the light that's bouncing off my face. If I turned off all the lights, you wouldn't see me, right? But the light that's bouncing off my face is less intense than the actual light itself. The light that's bouncing off of Mount Canigo is less intense than the sun. So the light that's bouncing off of Mount Canigo is trying to push 175 miles through the thick atmosphere, and it just doesn't make it. It just can't make it. It's too thick. However, when the sun's migrating in between the two tropics twice a year, it lines up with that viewer and the Mount Canigou. And as the sun, which is more powerful and can push through, it backlights the mountain. And here it is. The very top of Mount Canigou right there should be well over a half a mile below the curve, but it's right there. Okay. And the globe argument is, well, the sun already said a half an hour ago and the mountain is below the curve and it's magically refracting up and stopping at eye level to trick you. That's that that is the global explanation. Globe sense. Hey, nonsense and globe sense. Uh, I like like it. it. Globe sense. (laughs) Well, (laughs) Hey, so did you, people have been shot trying to go to Antarctica. Is that true or false? People have been arrested. Boats have been sunk. People have been put in jail and there's probably people that we don't even know about that's gone missing like you cannot go there and i want people to understand that because that blew my that is the part that blew my mind like how can we not go to antarctica how can we not explore our world like how can you tell me no because we're americans and we're free and we want to we want to take our authority right because we're, we're we're entitled that we live in america and so we have this mentality that the world is ours and we can explore it if we want to 
but no, you can't go to Antarctica or you will not get back home. Like it's illegal. Everybody yeah. So in the world. something that's interesting about the 12 countries that originally signed the Treaty of Antarctica, all 12 of them have space programs at this point. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's these uh, eight islands that all have military bases. The Falkland Island. Remember the Falkland War? That was a weird little war. Why do we care about this island? Because we need military bases. Now, yeah, there's thousands of miles in between these. You think that military can guard certain sections of the world? Absolutely. And then they also have um, they have uh, they have um, buoys out there that, that are literally a mesh network um, of buoys. They're kind of like land based. Uh, Sataloons, you know, ground um, water based Sataloons. Um, I'm trying to just find it for a second. Here it is. Oh, satellites. Um, and these, uh, these balloon, where there's the balloon. Hold on. So, you know, that they launched satellites. NASA owns all the helium companies in the world, or 99% of them. They control all the helium and they launch, you know, tens of thousands of satellites on balloons. We call them Sataloons. I've, right. been, I've been to the NASA balloon facility in Palestine, Texas, and they literally tell you that they launch almost all of them in Antarctica. They're, and like Dave said, they're the largest consumer of helium in the world. NASA is. Yeah. And then uh, the buoys, here's a buoy um, that, you know, you go anywhere near this thing, it's going to signal you. And there were some fishermen that went, if, we, if you watch the movie, um, The Next Level, uh, that's the name of the movie, The Next Level. Uh, it's also, it's on my app. You can find it there. Um, they got stopped by a destroyer. A destroyer came, sent a drone after them, turned them around like you're in restricted space. It's like they're just fishing in the middle of the ocean and they're kicked out of there because they don't want them anywhere near Antarctica. And, and 60 degrees south is still like a thousand miles or more from Antarctica. And you're not allowed to bring extra fuel. That's another rule. Right. And the reason is to protect the penguins and the ice. It's the only pristine place on the earth that humans haven't uh, polluted. Right. This is what they're telling us. Right. And this was this uh, the Antarctic Treaty went into effect before environmentalism was even a word. Yeah. Before before all this insanity of the Green New Deal. I can't right. stand the Green New Deal. It's a joke. It makes me there's not like nothing's going to happen. God's going to protect us because we're in his we're his creation. So I hate that. It's, it's a it's just a way for people to make money off of the government. Off of us, yep. off of our taxpayer money. Keep building that national debt. That's what it's for. Totally. So yep. is there anything else that y'all want to share? I want y'all to tell people how to get a hold of you, how to, I want people to expand their mind. And like y'all talked about is deception and not, there's a spirit there. There's, there's something that it does to people. And, and, and I can see my brother's a drug addict. And I'm thinking, I wonder if I haven't even talked to him about this, but it's like, you don't know what's going to break off of them and them get freedom when they understand that they're not just, they have a purpose, you know, it's, it's not so complicated. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, I have a book, it's called the house that Jesus built. You can find it on Amazon. You can also find it on Dave's app. And you can find me at Matt, son of Chris on any platform that they'll still let me be on. But that book is about, it's the reasons why I believe the earth is flat and it's highly concentrated on what the Bible says. It also has a chapter on the reliability of the Bible. I believe the Bible is most accurate and reliable collection of books ever created. Um, just finding out that the Bible was not one book was a big revelation for me. I didn't understand that. But taking these men for what they call eyewitness testimony, the Bible, the, the writers of the Bible are not asking you to believe what they believe. They're asking you to believe what they saw. They're eyewitnesses. They, they talk about themselves as eyewitnesses. These were real people. That was an enormous revelation for me. My book has that. It also talks about why they would lie, which we've talked about this. And anyone who's a Christian who wants to know what the Bible says and more in depth about this subject should get that book. It's called The House That Jesus Built on Amazon. Uh, Dave? Um, one other thing I want to talk about is uh, the whole environmental thing. Uh, 1978, this was the, the supposed photo of Earth, which has completely been debunked and proven and admitted by NASA to be painted and photoshopped. And then they say 2017, look how dirty the earth is getting. This is just another, you know, you guys are bad. You're destroying the earth. Okay. Both of these are paintings 
problem is the clouds didn't change this. They're lazy or they're sticking it in our face. OK, look at the clouds. They didn't change at all. All right. Didn't change at all. That's kind of crazy. Um, the way to find me, flatearthdave.com. My app, it's three dollars. It has um, I have a challenge, three bitcoins for one globe proof. Watch the daily video each day for two weeks. At the end of that two weeks, if you think you have a proof, um, send it to me. But before you do, hit the question mark button, which is the frequently asked questions, and see if your question is already answered there, which it probably is. Um, there's all sorts of other resources on here that will keep you busy forever. Um, books, Max, Matt's books in here, um, kids' books, all sorts of stuff. Um, and there's all, all, all sorts of uh, homeschooling stuff on here, mind-blowing stuff. Uh, Austin Witsit puts on an amazing show, um, tons of stuff, okay? So yeah, if I, could I plug, is, if I could plug Dave's app real quick, like when yeah. you go on YouTube, like Dave mentioned earlier, and you search Flat Earth, it's going to give you the, what they call authoritative content from places that they deem authoritative, authoritative, and YouTube does not deem Dave authoritative, nor does it deem me authoritative. This app is a place to get actual answers from actual flat earthers to find out what we actually believe. If you don't want to believe flat earth, just go look on Google, go look on YouTube, and you can immediately dismiss this whole thing. But if you're actually serious about what the Bible says, about what Dave says is happening with our world, go to this app, and in two weeks, you will be a flat earther. And when they tell you nobody is uh, believes flat earth, this is a fraction of the people that are in a small fraction of the people that know the earth is flat. These are people that are on my, what I call my friend finder um, on the app and on the app, you can actually send out messages. You can pick people, you can look at their profiles, you can message them. You can do video phone calls. There's groups to join. There's all sorts of stuff. There's community here of like-minded, aware, awake people that disagree with the two things that all governments agree with. Okay. Can't go here and have to get this. <laughs> so uh, amazing, uh, you know, and, it, and it's worldwide. Here's the UK. I mean, it, it is it's grown day from last time you showed this. It's grown oh, yeah, we just were over one hundred and one thousand now. Wow. I think when we were on, it was like 60,000. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's it's quite uh, an amazing way to network with people. Um, the, the profile section is going to be totally redone. It's going to literally be like Facebook, but not Facebook because it's going to be all cool people on there and um, and just different ways you can do stuff, play games with people. I've added so much to the app and um, you'll love it. And if you love it, um, tell someone else about it. And the more people that find out about the app, the faster the awakening happens. It's the greatest tool. Everyone has it in their hand all the time, right? And uh, it's, uh, you know, someone says, well, how do, how do we see, uh, how come I've seen, Boats go over the horizon. You just click the question mark and you say ships over the horizon. Click that. And up comes a playlist of the best videos that YouTube is hiding from you. You won't get any of these videos. And then you'll be like, oh, that's why boats go over the horizon like that. And then you'll see it. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. You can't unsee the truth. That's the thing about the truth. Once it pierces you, you can't unsee it. That's why the devil yeah. wants us not to know the truth. Yep. So thank you guys so much for coming on. I appreciate you. Y'all are awesome. You're you're I just uh, pioneers really and and breaking the truth from what we've been taught. And I'm, I appreciate you so much. So I want everybody to go and, and tell I know you said your your stuff, Matt. I, they'll put it at the bottom of the screen, but tell them again you're on social media, but not sure. Yeah, at Matt Son of Chris on Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and um YouTube. And then flatearthdave.com, you can get everything, get the app, and you can find Dave. Right. If you have a show, know of a show, want to send me a message there, uh, click book, book Flat Earth Dave. Yes. Um, you can have the take the crash course there. If you don't have a smartphone, just hit, take the crash course. It's a series of videos that I say you can't get through three of them without becoming an anti-glober at the least, if not a full-on flat earther. Um, not that there's a whole lot of difference there. And Dave, um, you and Dave, you actually lead YouTube in repeat appearances on people's shows, right? I, you know, what's funny is the shows that think Flat Earth is stupid and like I'll have this guy on, we're just going to destroy him. At the end of the show, they're like, "My brain hurts. I've never thought so hard in my life. Will you come back <laughs> again?" 
<laughs> yeah, come back again and again and again. And, and, and you can't, once you start like going down this trail, it's like, okay, this doesn't make sense. And this doesn't make sense. That's what makes it great. So thank you so much. Y'all come back next week. I'll see you on Jesus, Kids, and Babies. I'm Candace Taylor. I love you. God loves you. God bless America. Are you a blue dot? Those questioning where we live are not just here. They are everywhere. Of course, this info is hidden from you, but the app shows you that no matter where you go, you aren't alone. We are everywhere and we are growing. Find your tribe today. Hey, everybody. I want you to go to heavensharvest.com, promo code Candace, and I want you to get prepped. We don't know what's coming. Who knows? But regardless, whether it's a hurricane, national disaster, or the whole government shuts down, they have awesome deals on freeze-dried food. In fact, they have a new item. It's freeze-dried cans. It's a lot less expensive than the big barrels. Go there, heavensharvest.com, promo code Candace, and check them out.